So what we're going to do is, I just want to walk you through this together, just so you have a bit of an example. We'll look at some data. What this is about is about you get given data and you want to get some meaning out of it, right? Data can't tell you what it means. You have to pose it questions. And in fact, that's often the hardest part. What questions should you pose? Like you have to think of the questions to put to a set of data. The questions that you ask will define the kinds of things that you get out of data. So let's just start with the basics first. Have a look at this. We don't have a carry in the class, but I don't know if you're keen on golf, Laura. Um, nine holes of golf. So you can see one, two, three, all the way up to nine over here. It even mentions for you, which is helpful, usually the player with the lowest final score wins. Does, can anyone tell me why? Why is a low score good? Yeah, Laura. How many times you take to get Fantastic. So if you're uncoordinated like me, right, you have to hit so many times to get closer, and then even when you're right there, you're like, uh, oh, I missed, and then you go again and you miss. So that's why a, sm a smaller number. Uh, well, not with much accuracy. A smaller number means fewer hits, which is better. That means you're more angry. Okay. So you can see here it says, for each player find the mean, mode, median. Okay, can you just take a minute? Um, you'll need your book there, obviously. Um, the mode you can simply read off. Have a look at carries. Have a look at her scores. They're not in any order, but you can quickly see the mode, can't you? It's eight, that's right. One, two, three of them there. What about Laura? What's her mode? Four. Looks like four to me. Okay. So that's easy to read off. The rest of them require some calculation and reordering. So you can do it in your calculator if you like entirely. Can you spend a minute doing that and then we'll come back and discuss. You're starting to make a bit of progress here. Now what I've done, the question doesn't tell you to do this. However, if you have a look at where the parts are going, you can see that eventually what we want to do is all of this comparison we want to argue Who's better, right? Who's better? And you might look at part D and part E and be like, what's, what, what's with that? Who's really better? And the point is, in the real world, there's not a, oh, well, this player is clearly the best, or this player is clearly the best. It's far more frequent that you've, get, you've got a gray area. And it's like, well, someone's better in these regards, and then someone else is better in these regards. So what I've done, to be able to compare them nice and easily, is that we've been asked to work out six things. For each of these, um, for each of these players, you can see them there. There's the mean, mode, median, range, interquartile range, and standard deviation. You can write SD if you prefer, but this is what most people's calculators says, so that's why I've, I've written it. Uh, we already identified, I think, the mode for each of them. I think it was eight and four. Who's got a mean for each player? Can we get, um, can we get carries? Actually, six. Exactly six. Yeah. And who's six. got, who's got lower? Six. 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 Okay, I'll just put 6.1. I'll put 6.1. No, no, no. Oh, right, I see. Sorry, my bad. Okay, that's better. Okay, who's got a medium already? Anyone there? Yeah, Maddie, go ahead. Carrie? Uh, the medium for Carrie is 6, so we were talking about the medium for Maddie. For 5? Okay, fantastic. Alright, now. Those took a bit of calculation, but again, some of the other ones you can work out, like say the range. Uh, we already found out Carrie's mode happens to be her highest, which means her worst score. So we already know what the highest one is. What's her best score? Which hole? I think it's hole four, which is a score of three. So we can already say her range is going to be five. And Laura, <laughs> so we've got the same best score, but she has a really, really bad score, doesn't she? Which is? The final hole, so she got 15, which means her range is 12. Cool. However, you'll notice as soon as you go to interquartile range, okay, you're going to need to work out what the lower quartile, Q1, is and Q3 is. But you can immediately see this is not going to be counted in inter interquartile range. Do you agree? That's kind of the point of the interquartile range to take those really weird outliers and take them away from your calculation. We've done our calculations, we know what's good here. So here comes the important part. Here comes the analysis part. We want to make an argument off of this data that one of the players is better than the other. So I've got my scores here, right? Now, by the way, if you didn't get asked any of these questions at all, and you just got given the numbers, what would be your go-to place? Your first, if you can only calculate one thing, what would be the thing that you calculate 
that tells you who is better than the other. I think mean is a pretty normal place for us to go, which is why, rightly, it's first. Okay? And you can see the image that it portrays is not very meaningful, right? Like a, a difference of 0 0.1 is so insignificant that off the basis of that number alone, it's difficult to argue that one player is vastly better than another. Okay. Uh, in fact, if you have a look, the mean adds up all the scores, right? So it's just really one hit different in total. Does that make sense? That's the only thing that accounts for that 0 0.1 of difference, which might have just been, you know, like the, like, I don't know, Laura sneezed when she hit one of the balls, so that's why it just went off. And then after that, they were exactly the same. Okay? So you can see from here we don't have much to meaningfully compare or contrast them. All right, let's go down a little further. Can you make an argument from the mode? What do you think? Yeah, What's your, what would be the argument that you make from the mode? Hmm. So when we make an argument about consistent, right, the mode is an important number to use to argue about consistency because it's the thing that happens most often, right? So that's fair enough. However, is it the only number that tells you about consistency? Because if you look at this, this tells you, oh, cool, uh, if, you, if you look just at the most number, these are better, twice as better. But there's another number that tells you about consistency here as well. Which number is it? At, le at least one. Uh, range tells you about consistency, right? So you've got a very wide range there. I'd argue the standard deviation also tells you about consistency. You know, if potentially you had someone with a standard deviation of zero, what would that mean about the games that they play? Yeah, every single one is perfectly consistent um, because they get the same number every single time. So you can see that this number is a really good guide for it encapsulate how consistent they are across the game. So it's a bit dicey to say from here alone that Laura has a more consistent game, right? Okay, I'm not gonna tell you which other numbers to look at. How would you make an argument that carries a better player? I've, I've given you some guiding questions. Can you point me in a direction? Hmm. Yeah, okay, so you guys are both going for standard deviation. Why is this? enough of a creature to say, yeah, she's the player who I would put my money on. What do you think? Yeah. Because she's more consistent. Okay, so she's more consistent, but why is that a good thing? Someone could be consistently bad, and that would not mean they were better. Why is consistency a, a good quality to have in a golf player? Why is that a, like, okay, sorry, so just point out, I'm not trying to make fun of you or anything like that. But in data, when you're looking at data and you're trying to make comparisons like this, right? There are three questions you have to ask. First, you have to ask why, right? Why is the data the way it is? Right? And then when you have an answer to that question, like for example, Laura had a really bad game on the whole line, and that was pretty much just threw her off for the whole thing, right? Once you have an answer to that question, the second question you have to ask is, why? <laughs> well, why was that? What's special about the whole line that made it so bad, right? Or is it something about she has a really good start to the game and then the wheels just fall off. So actually she's a player who just gets really tired. Yeah, Does anyone know how many, game, uh, how many holes a normal game of golf is? Like a full? 18. It's 18, right? So maybe that's actually, everything was great and then she just gets, she's like, no more walking. Can't do this, okay? So consistency, right? Yeah, I saw, I saw these really cool like automated golf skateboards the other day. Anyway, it's a thing on Facebook. Okay, after you've asked why and then you ask why, can anyone tell me what the third question is that you ask? Why? You ask why again, <laughs> okay? Now, wow. like I said, I'm not trying to be mean, but why is consistency a good thing? Get it? Why, why, why? Why is predictability a good thing? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I feel like you guys are giving me synonyms for the word <laughs> consistent, <laughs> predictable, reliable, a lot the same. constant. Uh, uh, Angelica, what do you think? I was thinking maybe like if you're betting on the, you know, how good she is, mm -hmm. like in the future. Yeah, 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 like okay. So, my point here, you, you're not going to like this, my point here is I don't actually have an answer to that question, oh. we just have to but I up. need to, uh, the whole point is for you to not just say, oh well, I picked equality and that's, that's a good thing, well, but why is that a good thing, right? Um, I think if, if Angelica was, was trying to make a point, right, like maybe, maybe you've got like a team of players you want to pick on your golf tournament, right? 
Well, you don't want to pick all of them as really, really good sometimes and bad other times, like brilliant, but then disappointing. You want some players who are consistent, and maybe you want one who's can make a can make a whole new model or something like that. Um, but all the rest of the time is pretty ordinary. Okay. All right, that was your argument for carrying. Can you make an argument for Laura? Making her seem to better play. How can you how can you look at this data and that data? And um, convince me that actually Laura is the better player, not Karen. I can think of one, yeah, Laura. She won all holes. Okay, how many holes did she win out of the nine? Five. Five, right? Five out of nine. And if you take out, like when you look at hole nine, which is that weird hole, right? Uh, if you take that one out, five out of eight, five out of eight, right? Because that was one she really lost. Um, five out of eight is even more of a majority. So clearly, um, if you take into account the difficulty of the overall each individual one, because you guys know it like resets, right? Every time it's like, I'm in a whole different place now, right? So the rules for this hole and this hole are quite different. Then she looks better on paper. That's, that's an important thing. What else? What else? How else could you argue that Laura is a better player? Okay, the 15, which is what made them look comparable in the first place, is an outlier. If we took this out, can you recalculate her mean? Can we calculate Carrie's mean? Just out of the first eight holes, divide by eight. Then someone else can work out, maybe within a pair, if one of you could do one and one does the other. Can you work out Laura's mean, add them up and divide by eight? What do you get if you um, change that? Carrie's is five. Carrie's 5.1? 5. And Laura's? Five. That's a bit more of a stark kind of um, comparison, don't you think? Um, that shows a more over that, over that sort of part of the game, that's a fairly consistent difference. Whereas we said point one was like almost nothing. Okay. Um, it's an outlier. I think maybe she just got unlucky, right? Like maybe she um, she hit it once into a sand trap and then she was just stuck, right? Whereas she never ever does that. Do you see my point is just to pose questions to the data, right? Have a think about the data doesn't tell the whole story. What could account for it? And this is kind of the whole life of that's statistics. Deep. Uh, in fact, statistics, you guys know how I make a big deal about names? It's now compulsory. It is now compulsory for anyone doing stage 6 maths. Statistics is a bit weird though. Um, statistics did not start as a part of mathematics, which is why if you go to universities, you find a school of mathematics and statistics, it's something different. Um, the word literally means it's just information about the state. It came from like demographers and politicians who wanted to understand human beings and how populations fit. That's why we did sampling of populations, right? So you're going to be in the position of having data and not knowing who is better, but you have to be in charge of asking the question.